But the major departure, one might say, and one of the main achievements of the Reconstruction governments, and what I want to do today is really talk about what these governments did when they got into power, was the establishment of the first public school systems uh, in the South. Here's a picture of a schoolhouse, a, a freed schoolroom. It's not very luxurious, obviously, but before the Civil War, there were no public school systems in the South, with the exception of Tennessee and, for a short period of time, North Carolina. What I mean is a system, not just individual schools. There were private schools, private academies. There were sometimes local schools in some towns. There were uh, charity schools here and there for poor white children. But um, there was no system of tax-supported public education. Um, in southern schools. The planters didn't want to pay for this. They were sending their kids to private schools or having tutors come to the plantation to educate them. Many poorer whites didn't want to pay the taxes which were required to support public, um, public education. So now you have state systems with the financed, as all around the country, by the general property tax, by local property taxes, generally tax on land, naturally, to support the creation of these uh, uh, public schools. Um, now, as we saw, and for both black and white, right? Before the war, it was illegal to teach a slave to read and write. And free blacks sometimes had some access to education, very often, but privately, there was no public education for free blacks, but in some places they were able to set up schools of their own. As we saw, black education had really begun in the Civil War, in the Army, and then with the Freedmen's Bureau coming down and setting up schools, and then these northern religious and other aid societies sending teachers to try to establish schools, the American Missionary Association, a religious organization sent teachers and money and books uh, into the South right after the end of the Civil War. Um, but now those things are all taken over and tremendously expanded by the state governments. Now every northern state had a state-funded system of public education at that time. This was normal. But now for the first time it comes to the South. And, you know, as I pointed out in, in my book, the, everybody who was commenting on Reconstruction was unanimous in um, in uh, writing about the enthusiasm, the tremendous enthusiasm of African Americans for education of all ages, not just children, but adults uh, of all kind, people trekking miles to attend schools. You don't have to be a, a genius to understand that education is a valuable thing to have. People wanted education just uh, because that was, <laughs> they could take part in the world better, they could take part in politics better, they could deal with employers better if they were literate. They could read the Bible, very, very important to religious people, Protestants anyway, that they could read the Bible if they were literate. Um, and so there was all this enthusiasm. Now, many Southern whites were very hostile to the idea of black education, certainly at the beginning, particularly planters. They thought that you didn't need to be educated to be a field hand, to work out there in the cotton fields, education was sort of an impediment. It might lead people to become dissatisfied with the um, occupation that they had. Um, they, of course, were quite hostile to northern teachers who came down, accusing them of spreading all sorts of incendiary ideas. Um, there were many instances in the early days of Reconstruction of the burning of schoolhouses, uh, violence, or more likely ostracism of white teachers. White teachers would come into a community, they couldn't find a place to live. Many, they'd often had to live with a black family in some very, you know, rundown kind of shack. Um, they, they were just, uh, particularly female teachers who came to the South from the North, and there were many of them, uh, were treated to a lot of ostracism and just nobody would invite them anywhere, talk to them among the white community, etc. Education was the main long-lasting achievement, one might say, of these Reconstruction governments. Education for white and black children. It was the first time that poorer white children had access to public education, as well as African Americans. 
uh, it laid the foundation for the public school system in the uh, ex-slave states. Um, of course, it took a while to get off the ground. It cost a lot of money to build schoolhouses and pay teachers and get the facilities going. But certainly by the 1870s, the school systems were operating uh, quite well. Uh, many hundreds of thousands of children, both black and white, were in school in the South, most of them for the first time, uh, when by the time Reconstruction ended. And increasingly, more and more of the teachers in black schools, and we'll come to whether they were integrated or segregated in a minute, were African American. At the beginning, there were a few black teachers came down from the South. Uh, Charlotte Fortin, very famous, a black woman from Philadelphia, the, uh, a member of the Fortin family, which was a very prominent free black family. We know about her because she kept a diary which has been published of her teaching her experiences on the Sea Islands. But most of the teachers initially were white, but increasingly more and more blacks are educated and become teachers, particularly in the first, in the black colleges. They see the other thing is that you get for the first time higher education established for African Americans in the South. It's in Reconstruction that universities that still exist today, uh, the so-called historically black colleges, Fisk University, Howard University, Alcorn University, Southern University, um, others, they're founded also uh, in Reconstruction. At first, they are basically teacher, what we call normal schools, teacher training schools. It's out of those universities, if that's what you want to call them, that this new cadre of black teachers will emerge and become uh, prominent by the uh, 1870s. And, and also, they become part of an emerging, small but emerging African-American middle class or professional class that begins to take shape uh, after the end of slavery. 